All right, people, welcome back. We're here to discuss a watch market update. I think it's been around almost five months since I last did this. And right now we are at the end of the summer of 2024. And here's what I have to update you with. Number one, we're gonna start with Rolex. The market has stayed flat, but there's been several changes that I wanna discuss. Although there have been many watches that obviously have trended down, there's been a few that for some reason have trickled up. And I really don't know why. Number one, the Wimbledon. They just Wimbledon, whether it's in stainless steel, two-tone, yellow and rose, for some reason they appear to have trickled up a bit. I honestly really don't understand why. Because the Datejust, although it's a very popular model and it sells great, I don't really understand because there hasn't been a lot of shortage of that model. But for some reason, the Wimbledons have trickled up. Again, very strange. The next one's gonna be the Yachtmaster 2 in yellow gold. I've noticed that these prices have gotten surprisingly stronger. I mean, you're gonna be paying for one that's gonna be the last gen, the ones that last came out unworn in the mid 50s, which personally for me just sounds like a lot of money. Now, we can't confuse this with the older first gens, with the blue hands. There's a lot of those out there and those are actually not so expensive, but for some reason, the last ones that came out in the last two years before they got discontinued appear to be very expensive. Are they selling? I don't know. You got to ask some of the other guys if they sold any. I personally have not sold any at those prices. Now, a few other variations that appear to be trickling up a bit. I'm not saying that they're going on a trend, that they're gonna be going up, but they kind of have gone up in price. And I'm basing this off of more like, what is my cost when I need to source one for clients? For some reason, the day dates in yellow gold with the champagne baguettes or the champagne Romans or the white dials have gotten a little bit stronger. Uh, where they were at some point in the mid 30s, now they're over 40. Another one's gonna be the platinum day date with the fluted bezel. Things are strong, man. I don't understand. My costs on them are stronger than usual. I'm not sure if there's just not many around anymore. Like they have trickled out very slow. But another one we're going to add to that would be the rose gold with the white dial. Specifically that one for some reason. Now, all these prices that I'm talking about are for brand new, meaning in the last year, fresh dates. Don't call me with your watch from 2017 and wonder if your watch is more expensive. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones straight off the press. Those new unworn rose day dates with the white dials are in the mid 40s, which again, just strange that the market is mostly trickling down, but yet some pieces decide to go up. Now let's talk about the Platinum Daytonas. The Daytonas and Platinum have seemed to have held the same range. They haven't changed. I say for a brand new 126, 506, you're gonna be in the mid 120s to 120. Again, over retail, surprising when everybody says that everything's on the floor, that you, know, you see on Instagram that the gold models are under retail. Correct, for some models, but not all. Next, let's talk about some of the watches that have simmered down, starting with the Yacht Master in titanium. Right now, those watches are in the mid 20s, which is a polarizing comparison to when they first came out and they were in the 40s. I think one of the main reasons that that watch continues to be over retail is the fact that not many people are getting the call for that watch. You know, when you think about the deep sea challenge in titanium, those watches are MIA. At first, several came out, but now, you barely see them and nobody gets the call for them. And I think that's what keeps bolstering them up in the market. The Bruce Wayne also has gone down a bit where it was in the mid 20s. Now it's kind of in the low 20s, if the 20 range. Jubilee Oyster, of course, always makes a difference. Another one that was also kind of hot the last seven months in prices was the Pepsi. Also has come back down a bit. Maybe perhaps all that, you know, speculation of the red bezel and all that has finally just died and it's just kind of just become a normal GMT with a bi-colored bezel that yes, is still over retail. No matter what we're talking about, some of these are still way over retail. 
but yes, they have come down a bit. Stainless Daytona still appear to be the same range since I last did a market update. Uh, not a lot of change there. Now let's move on to Patek. Patek, interesting enough, the Nautilus with the 5990 in stainless steel, they have trickled down a little bit with the gray dial. I'm talking about a difference of five grand, maybe 10, depending on the specs of it, including the one with the blue dial. They've trickled down a little bit. Not sure what it is because I think that's a great watch. And the part to me that's so contrasting is that the 5980 J Leno is still strong at about the 200K mark, which is crazy considering that it's 100 and something thousand over retail. Beautiful watch, love the theme at this point, but I'm not sure about the prices, but surprisingly, they're still there. Last one that I'm gonna go over for the sports models of Patek is the Aquanaut. The Aquanauts seem to be in the same area. No drastic changes that I've seen that are pretty much really worth mentioning, you know? Even when it comes to the 5168s, they had gone down a little bit and then they went right back to where they were. Still over retail, still very surprising. Now, last but not least, let's discuss AP. I think if you've been in the market to buy a Royal Oak for quite some time and have been maybe kind of scared or hesitant because of the prices, I would say right now is a pretty decent time because the prices have gone down a lot. When you compare them to a year ago, especially two years ago, the prices are almost halfway. So I think if you're looking to get into a Royal Oak right now or anything of that nature, might not be a bad time to look, especially in stainless steel, which really did the most pullback into reality. One of the models in the AP Royal Oak lineup that I feel right now has a lot of good deal and value are the 42 millimeter offshores. We're talking about the vampires, the elephants, the safaris, the navies, things like that. Maybe it's because people are kind of going into smaller watches and don't want the bulky 42s, but I feel like there's a lot of good deals there where you can pick them up anywhere from the high teens to the low 20s, where previously that was unheard of. The overall watch market trend is pretty surprising right now when you compare it to some of the final sales that we have seen even this summer in the auction houses when it comes to rare unique pieces or vintage stuff. It's crazy because on one end, the watch market is slowing down in the overall general prices. But then when you get to the unique rare stuff at the auctions, they're like breaking records. So it's like, what is it? Is the market dead or is it on fire? Maybe it's just the auctions that are. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see what happens this year. And somewhere at the end of the year, I will do another follow-up. So comment below what you think about the market right now and if there's any good deals you've been able to pick up. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel.